broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our quarterly call for IT vendors. I'm very happy to have you today. Very numerous, a lot of people are attending. Uh, it's a great news. My name is Frédéric Munch, and I'm very happy to be your host again today. And today's call is extraordinary in many ways because we have great news to share with you. The first one is the launch of our new brand. It's a pre-announcement. The official launch will be on Thursday. The presentation of our market forecasts for 2019 uh, for uh, Europe mainly, uh, done by my colleague Jason Stamper, uh, research director from uh, our London office, and the presentation of our portfolio for vendors in 2019. But first of all, I'd like to start by showing you a short video. Someone once said that following the path to technological innovation is like venturing into a maze. But not just any maze, a complex maze made of shifting walls and sinuous paths, dynamic and ever-changing. To stay competitive, businesses are constantly forced to venture into this maze in search of technological solutions. But the path is tricky unless you have a good map. Thankfully, our new brand comes with a solid mission to demystify technology. We believe in the use of analysis and assessment tools to decrypt data and obtain an objective understanding of technology, its uses and limits when applied to business. This, in turn, allows us to help our clients understand and evaluate their short-term operational options and long-term technological choices. Our name was inspired by our vocation to put our expertise and knowledge at the service of our clients, thanks to actionable methodologies and frameworks. Combined technology. So I'm very, very proud to present your new name, Technology Group, today. Um, three years ago, we came together with the vision to form the leading European analyst house, with the conviction that our strengths comes from our complementarities and different perspectives. You all know us quite well. We are four teams, CXP, PAC, Park, and Hardware Consulting, that share a European perspective on IT issues. We are four teams with the same values. We are four teams with a rich history. Some of the companies have been created in the 70s. And we are four teams that share especially the same vision of an integrated analyst and consulting company that delivers high quality content and customized services. Our teams in the last three years have worked very hard to maintain the specificity of their expertise while laying the foundation for our new group. And we think that our name perfectly embodies the work done in the recent years. So why technology? We've been uh, following the development of the IT industry for more than four decades. Basically, I would say since the birth of the software and IT services industry. We've always been passionate about information technology, even those of us who, for, first of all, focus on IT services. So the name thus became quite obvious, actually. And at the heart of this brand is knowledge, now. This is fundamental for us. We are first and foremost a content company, even if the dissemination of this content takes the form of variety of services, many of which are advisory services. And when profound transformation are at work, like it is the case today, and since we work and live in a very connected world where social media plays a very big role, you have a lot of people out there, many gurus and predictors who give their opinions. Our services are first based on proven expertise, data, facts, 
and with a methodology, very methodological organization. Sorry about this word, always difficult for me. So the suffix logi, that's we are European company, so we think quite far in our thinking, but the suffix logi stands from the Latin logia and characterize what is the result of a scientific approach. And more just as a theoretical explanation for those who works with us know how the methodological approach uh, is very important of, for us. And we know that our, this is very important difference for our customers to be a reliable and trusted partner um, in, in these very changing times. Our many years of experience allow us also to bring a different perspective to the current challenge and the future challenge. Basically, we help our clients make decisions today for their future. So this stands, this is why technology and the little spelling gap also illustrates our desire to be different and to offer something special, even if we will in the future have to explain probably several times why we misspelled technology. So we are very proud about our new name, and this new name also explains and illustrates our group model, our model, which I would like to, to say a few words about. And our model is based on continuous exchange with the ecosystem, bottom up, in the countries, in the verticals, our analysts, basically analyst meetings, consulting projects and research are part of our daily work. This means also, that the production of content is always at the center of our attention. In that sense, as a group, we decided to build our model uh, on two content platforms, two digital content platforms. The first one, my techno, is the result of uh, more than a year of work uh, where we try to put together and bundle our content and our expertise into one new digital platform for the IT buyers. And we have bundled this content and expertise to address four main use cases. Transform your business, secure your environment, drive your IT business efficiency, and select your solutions and partners. So that is a big change and a very great, terrific news for us. My Techno will be launched in January both in English language and in French language for all the French speaking customers of the group. And we will be launched in German language in April for the German speaking uh, customers on the user side. We're, our intention is to uh, have from day one, or at least in the after so, some first month, uh, the, the content and the services in all three major languages from our markets. And in addition to provide content, uh, this platform will offer a set of interactive services, such as, for example, real-time benchmarking, exchange between members of the My Techno, Techno community, and direct access to technology analysis. Uh, for more information, we are ready to have one-to-ones with you, and anyway, we will have a further set of uh, of communication starting beginning of next year. This, I wanted to share that with you as a pre-announcement to show you the new move we have on the IT user side. But because we are the partners of the European IT users, we also can help best the IT vendors to define their strategy. And uh, the originally developed by PAC, we decided to take the CTC uh, subscription service and the CTC platform as the basis and cent central platform, content platform for the IT vendors, for the whole group. And based on CTC, we have developed and uh, redefined our portfolio according to three main use cases. Understanding uh, the IT markets, make the right decision, and sharpen the profile with the right target group. This is also a new move. We will not only talk only about our products, events, services, but rather talk about how and which and, uh, use case and pain points we address and how we address them. I'm going to come to that part a little bit later in, in our webinar. To, to fulfill uh, the, um, 
the profile or the description of our group, I wanted to go through some key metrics with you. Uh, transparency has always been uh, of importance for us and especially to me. It is not about explaining to everybody that we can do it all, but to be clear on what we do and say it and respect. Do really what we say and, and say what we do to be proud about that. With our long-standing uh, partners as Net Consulting in Italy or Red Ico in Scandinavia, for example, we have all in all a network of approximately 150 analysts and consultants spread in seven countries, mostly in, uh, in Europe. We have a pretty healthy distribution of revenue between IT users and IT vendors, thanks to the addition of Ardour in Q2 this year, uh, who increased that, that part as well. We do roughly now 40% of, of our revenue with nearly 1,000 user company every year, from people taking part to our events to um, large and complex six-digit uh, advisory services. The, our customers come mainly from the manufacturing industry, from the public sector, the banking and, and, and insurance, utilities and retail. We have also a quite good balance service, um, a re balance revenue breakdown by service lines. We follow three main service lines. Um, while we still do the bulk of our uh, revenue with custom work, research, custom research or consulting projects, at the heart we, we have our content subscriptions, which represents a little more than one third of our revenue. And last but not least, we do um, 75% of our revenue in EMEA and 25% in North America. This mainly means that uh, these are the origin of our clients, but we have very often global assignments for, this, uh, for these clients, especially on the user side. As well with this team of 150 analysts and experts, we always tried and we are always trying to, to, to do so is to have a 360 degree view on the software and IT services topics and markets. Um, having said that, we have a model where our analysts have a kind of major in terms of expertise and being able to put this major into the full context. Yet, therefore, each of our analysts belong to one of six or covers one of the six expertise, expertise fields we define. We have already, I already presented several times, five of them in our webinars, which are infrastructure and cloud services, business application and, uh, and app services, IoT and all the digital context. Uh, more than digital transformation, we now go one step further and we go more into the verticals, what we call the digital context, which is at the crossroad of key topics and transformation topics and verticals. I will come to that later on also. For sure, the BI and data management expertise uh, with an extension and development on cognitive analytics and artificial intelligence, uh, the bulk of the team coming from Park, enterprise security, and last but not least, the C, all the CIO organization and strategy related topics, CIO transformation, the future of the IT organization and all the sourcing topics. So I think at this first stage, it's, uh, I, get, I hope I could give you a, a very com full view of our new brand and positioning and what the group stands for now. As said, it is a pre-announcement. Uh, the official announcement will follow um, later this week and uh, we will share with you a lot of further content in the coming weeks. At this stage, I'm now pleased to hand over to Jason, as said before, who will present our vision of, of the, the, the market trends for 2019. Jason? Thank you very much, Fred. So the first thing to say is that uh, my name is Jason Stamper. I'm based in our London office, and uh, I've been writing and talking about IT for around 25 years and my main focus is uh, database data management and the internet of things but i'm going to talk you through a little bit uh, some of our predictions as a group that we uh, worked on together as a team uh, as fred mentioned over 150 analysts and consultants in seven countries uh, some predictions that we came up with and and some of our uh, high level thinking 
about what's going on in the software and IT services industry. Um, so the, this essentially is the very high level view. Um, at, the, at the bottom layer, you've got some of the individual technologies, AI and robotic process automation, cloud, cyber, uh, AI, agile development, DevOps, and so on. Um, we think that IoT automation and customer experience is increasingly um, pulling several of these uh, underlying technologies together into a more coherent uh, solution set. Um, but it's important to realize that what, what businesses are really trying to achieve are these blue uh, spheres at the top here, uh, which is, of course, to improve their efficiency, um, expand their existing business and develop new services and business models. So while selective trends may undergo annual changes, the overall move towards digitalization is rather a constant development as far as uh, technology is concerned. And that started several years ago and will take many more. In our view, there are three key objectives, um, as I mentioned, increasing the efficiency, expanding existing business models and opening up new potentials and groups. Now, there are two options at the starting point of the journey. You can either look at the goals mentioned above through the eyes of the customer, in which case digital technologies related to the customer experience are at the center of considerations. Or you can think about starting inside the company with a digital renewal of processes, in which case innovations in IoT and automation uh, increasingly and very, very important. Of course, the customer experience and IoT automation can't be considered separately without leading the whole project to a ridiculous conclusion. Ultimately, you don't want isolated solutions. So digitalization also means integration and interaction of many of the pieces that you can see along the bottom line. This includes in enabling technologies such as cloud computing, analytics, big data, AI, automation, security, governance, risk and compliance, as well as thinking about architectures and platforms. So there's a ra real range that our 150 analysts and consultants need to keep an eye on. Now, if you move away from viewing digitalization from a technical perspective, quickly becomes apparent that new ecosystems are essential because the capability of a partner network far exceeds what a single company can do on its own. So fast integrated solutions to specific problems can be developed and operated in specific applications and benefiting customers. And increasingly, we as an organization are hearing more and more about fast data rather than big data. The big data trend was largely around Hadoop and data lakes and data swamps, as some analysts have called it. Fast data is increasingly about in-memory data, in-memory databases and data grids and caches, and being able to really have that fluidity of data around the organization and the analysis of that data that gives you valuable insights. Digital technologies are, of course, required to build and operate these sorts of ecosystems. And this is especially true when it comes to the integration and interaction of both the services and processes of different partners and parties. Technologies such as cloud, data platforms, open architectures, APIs, containers, and the list goes on, microservices. These are all growing in importance in this era. As in previous years, there's another issue beyond technological innovations that companies will have to contend with in 2019, and that's the shortage of skilled workers. Our view is that the situation will get even worse since traditional companies in all industries are increasingly transforming into digital companies and are increasingly looking for IT experts such as developers, project managers, IT architects, and so on, for their transformations. The situation could be exacerbated because we expect an increasing need for custom software development in the context of this kind of digital transformation. So the challenge for service providers will therefore be to design modern sourcing concepts that integrate on-site, near-shore and offshore capacities into agile development projects and DevOps processes probably easier said than done. And last not least, data will continue to be an important topic in the coming year. Of course, it always has been, but companies should be well aware of the enormous value of data and how its collection, processing and analysis forms the basis for all new and expanded services and business models. To unlock the hidden potential of raw data, information must be sorted, consolidated and cleansed. And topics such as data management, data cleansing and data enrichment are incredibly important and of course don't just think about the cost of dodgy data as we call it but also the uh, reputational risk of having poor data within your organization and what that might mean for your GRC and compliance. So let's move to the next slide. 
these are our top 10 predictions of big things, if you like, that are happening uh, between this year and next year and beyond. Um, I won't read them all out, um, but you can see the uh, edge computing, for example, we've written recent reports on about how IoT, a lot of the anal analytics is moving to the edge because otherwise you saturate data centers. Um, distributed ledger technology I'm going to talk about shortly. Um, security is always a massive theme, but with cybersecurity threats these days and the geopolitical situation, it's possibly even more important. And AI, um, none of you could have uh, got on an airplane and picked up an in-flight airplane magazine without reading about how um, CEOs and CTOs are trying to build and weave AI into their organization and their organization's processes for a number of reasons. So I'm going to drill down briefly into four of these particular trends which are highlighted here. Business innovation architecture is a concept that uh, we at Technology Group have come up with to try and help and frame uh, some of the models that we think organizations should be uh, striving to, to get towards. Of course, many organizations are at a different stage of maturity and um, uh, you know this isn't something they can necessarily do in a three week uh, window but it's certainly an architecture that we think we're helping to, to build our ideas around where organizations are hoping to lead to. I'm also going to be talk about talk a little bit about cloud, AI, and uh, the distributed ledger technology that I mentioned. So if we move on to the next slide, I'll talk about a little bit about this business innovation architecture that we've been working on. So a very important trend for the coming year is quite classic, but under a new guise, and it's modern intelligent IT architectures. A concept that we call business innovation architecture or BIA. So what is this? It's the need for a new type of architecture coming from the requirement for rapid and continuous change. So the pressure to quickly introduce new digital technologies and innovations is increasing, of course, and in some cases it's overwhelming today's IT installations and infrastructure. So in our view, a business innovation architecture must enable the integration and interaction of data, technologies, processes and services, and ecosystems. The aim, of course, is to try as much as possible to future-proof architectures and place data at the center. Of course, the, the whole concept of future-proofing architectures is riven with challenges because we don't really know what the future holds, although we can make um, sensible, educated guesses. But the idea is to try and future-proof architectures as much as possible. A business innovation architecture must adopt a holistic approach to digital transformation in a company. And this includes customer driven changes at the front end, as well as operational digitalization at the back end, such as the Internet of Things, robotic process automation, and so on. Now let's talk about multi clouds and migration to the public cloud on the next slide. I mean, no, nobody can avoid, um, nobody who, who's not been on, on Mars uh, doesn't know that cloud is, uh, is here and now, and it's a real thing. Um, despite protestations, of course, in the very early days from Larry Ellison saying that, um, that there was no such thing, and now, of course, Oracle saying that they're the biggest cloud provider in the world. Um, but regardless of that, there's been a noticeable increase in recent years in migration rates to the public cloud. And we're no longer just talking about development and test projects in which the storage and computing resources uh, are ramped up and dialed down again as needed. That whole idea of um, you know, flexible on demand, um, ramp up and ramp down kind of idea. Increasingly productive uh, applications, SAP is a good uh, example, are also being moved to public clouds. You can see there um, on the slide the growth rates that we're predicting and the total volume, so 157 billion. Uh, in EMEA alone, we expect. And more and more companies are even testing out the public cloud as an alternative to their own data center and thinking um, longer term or medium term about whether or not they can do without data center at all, of course. Um, we know this is a trend that's growing. I'll give you one example that we've written about, um, a publicly known example in the IoT subsidiary of Deutsche Bahn, DB Systel, for example. Uh, from 22, it wants to source 80% of its applications from the cloud data center of AWS. And uh, that's that's rising from a very small percentage of its current uh, data center um, running in the cloud. And of course, uh, there are other triggers as well, such as SAP migrations. Many organizations are thinking whether or not as they move to S4 HANA, for example, a cloud-based solution might work. Um, I was in an event 
just last week in in Europe with MongoDB, um, a database company that had has cloud offerings in the NoSQL database space. Um, and many, many of the developers that I spoke to there uh, are doing a lot of their testing in the cloud and then thinking they'll bring it back in house, but actually finding that the cloud versions work just as well. And, um, you know, as long as the CTO and CFO are happy and they meet their compliance requirements, they tend to be keeping production applications in the cloud. So that's definitely um, a key trend that I'm, I'm sure many of you will have seen. The next one I want to talk about briefly is um, AI. Again, like I say, you can't get on an airplane without reading about AI. Um, and of course, there are two views. One is that uh, is the sort of um, dystopian view of the sort of Arnold Schwarzenegger AI, where they start to take over the world, um, or you know, self-driving cars that aren't aren't any safer. And you know, who decides in a moral question, um, you know, where a where a self-driving car should crash? All these sorts of uh, moral and ethical questions that. Um, individuals, organizations, and in, indeed governments will have to grapple with. But from a technology perspective, it, although it's been a niche until now, AI is on the verge of widespread use in business. So this is going to result in new and rewarding fields of application, such as the optimization of operations, customer support in contact centers, for example, the customer experience. Um, so many of the early stages are chatbots and the like, but we think this is going to obviously expand and, and become even more sophisticated. But we also believe that AI isn't a single technology. It's a tool set of various technologies that can be used to implement various scenarios. So today, AI providers offer ready to use modules that co capture the content of texts, understand natural language, recognize moving objects and faces, for example, I know it's been used on the London Underground to try and predict when somebody might be at risk of um, uh, harming themselves, for example, using AI to um, analyze video patterns and so on. So it's already it's already being pressed into action for all sorts of very important uh, use cases. But we define four AI areas um, for different business applications. AI based enhanced analytics is based on intensive data analysis used to help to identify patterns and predict future results. Typical usage scenarios arise here in the areas of cybersecurity and marketing. Another important and advanced application is robotic process automation that I've talked about, and we've done quite a bit of work on this. If you're interested, you can have a look on our website or give us a call. And the third field of application is in the areas of customer experience and customer interaction that I mentioned chatbots are the very basic example of that. And there the focus is on better and innovative customer experiences. And the last one that we've identified is the field of application of intelligent agents, where personal assistance systems are implemented to relieve employees of time consuming and monotonous tasks so they can do something more interesting. Now, the last one I'm going to talk about on our next slide is what we call distributed ledger technology. And much of the industry is uh, defining it essentially as an evolution of blockchain, but we're calling it DLT. So, of course, many of you will, I'm sure all of you will have heard about Bitcoin. I don't know if any of you have managed to mine one yet or have a big enough computer and a cave with enough cooling uh, to cool your mainframes to mine one yet. But blockchain technology has made tremendous progress over the past year. We've been following this. And this includes, for example, new enterprise Ethereum alliance specifications that open up blockchain for corporate use and promote interoperability between different blockchain protocols. There are production ready um, frameworks uh, today already, believe it or not, of the open source projects such as Hyperledger Fabric and Hyperledger Sawtooth. We've also written about those. In addition, protocols such as Multichain and IOTA promise more transaction processing capability. Most noteworthy are innovations that move away from the pure blockchain model and create new pragmatic solutions for use in the business environment. And if you're an IT service provider, if you haven't already, it's worth keeping an eye on some of the writing and some of the innovations that are coming out of this area, because we think the immutability of blockchain and uh, the, the ledger technology that we're talking about will be very valuable in more and more organizations. Another example is the Lightning Network, which has induced off-chain transactions to the Bitcoin environment for the first time. And the idea behind this is not to store each item of information in a blockchain, but to consolidate transactions outside of it. So this is off-chain solutions, and they're increasingly being tested in private blockchains to enable and store and delete sensitive personal information. 
it all gets very technical very quickly and i'm not the expert in this but we do have people who are so if you're interested in knowing more or wondering how your organization might benefit from some of the opportunities around blockchain um, please do uh, give us a call or bear us in mind so all of these developments mean that ser serious solutions based on dlt are arising in many companies and activities are particularly evident in industries such as logistics commerce banking pharma uh, for example the traceability of physical and virtual goods is an important part of all of this technology and it's where it's one of the areas where it really seems to be shining and the last slide I'm going to talk about, if we go to the next one, is about some of our vertical sector coverage. Um, obviously, we, we appreciate, we know full well that we have many competitors in this industry, but with our 150 analysts focused um, very much with their ear to the ground, specifically at least 75% in EMEA, we have a very good view of what's going on in different verticals in EMEA and indeed in different geographies within EMEA. And... Within the CITSI database, software and IT services database, we're able to have a very, very granular view of what's going on in different geographies, different service providers, different service provisions, such as the difference between software testing, infrastructure management, and so on, what organizations are actually spending money on, and we also then forecast that out and make predictions as to what's happening in the future. So here, for example, and we have much more detail and granular detail than this slide, but just as a very high overview for you, this gives you an idea of the uh, the growth we saw 17, 18. The light blue bars there are what we're predicting, uh, our late, latest market update, which we did in the first half of this year. Um, it's also worth noting, we constantly um, monitor this. There are, of course, changes. Um, you can make predictions like any analyst firm, but the important thing is not to make a prediction out to 2022 and then just leave it static. The important thing is to constantly revisit those um, predictions that you've made, check whether or not your assumptions have been correct, if not, why not, and bring that back in a, in a 360 degree, degree view into your models so that you improve your forecasting as you go along. And we're quite renowned in EMEA for having very good forecasting, both in verticals, but also across different uh, specialisms such as IT services and software. So the orange arrows, just to give you an idea, are when we do our next update in February next year, are how we think some of those grow growth rates might actually be changing. So for example, in manufacturing, um, we predicted relatively high growth, but we're now seeing some headwinds in manufacturing, as I'm sure you've heard about, particularly um, in Germany. There's obviously a lot of um, uh, question marks uh, in the UK also around Brexit and so on, but geopolitical question marks as well, and things like some of the uh, emissions uh, testing issues. Um, I understand that one of the old uh, Berlin airports is being used to park VW cars in because they're not selling them fast enough is just one example. So the automotive uh, industry in Germany, which obviously is one of the powerhouses of the economy, is facing some headwinds. So we might have to um, adjust our predictions in that sector, for example. Public sector, obviously, we're able to talk to um, and, and monitor various governments, such as the Office of uh, National Statistics in the UK, um, and keep an eye on where uh, public spending is likely to head. Again, um, these things can change after elections and other events and so on. But this is just to give you an idea that these are kind of a, a very high level view of some of the areas that we're able to uh, keep track of and help your organization potentially, or your users' organizations, uh consider their investment opportunities and when and where might be a good place and a, and a good uh good area to invest in uh even potentially buy organizations within or or handle your marketing activities around so i think uh that was my last slide thank you very much uh hope you found that of some interest i'd now like to head hand it back to fred over to you fred thank you Thank you, Jason. While you were speaking, I had some troubles with my slides, but uh, I unmu unmuted myself again. Thank you very much, Jason, for, for this overview. Um, important to say is that um, we have uh, put together a document with, uh, with our predictions 2019 uh, on the qualitative side, uh, meaning uh, explaining the 10 predictions and how they will impact the complete software and IT services market. Uh, this will be shared with you in the coming weeks. Um, now, I'd like to um, go through uh, the, the last part of our webinar and show you how we actually will cover 
uh, these topics next year with our research and services. Uh, and uh, we've been asked by uh, already a, a lot of our customers what the research agenda will be next year. So on the CITC side, so as I've said, the content uh, platform for, for the IT vendors, uh, we already worked uh, parallelly to the um, predictions 2019, the teams coming from the vendor side, the user side and the different countries work um, quite intensively together in the last uh, two months to uh, put together first idea of the research agenda. Here as well, it is a first overview. We will in the coming weeks um, send you uh, documents with the list of documents we, we, we aim to publish. CC is a very massive uh, content subscription uh, program and every year we publish around, we, we tackle around 100 new topics and trend reports which are really brand new and add every year. This year we, first of all, as I said at the very beginning of our call, um, we want to take a closer look uh, to the vertical side. So that means that, for example, regarding this part of CTC and the 100 new reports, we, there will be a quite strong shift towards vertical specific contexts. We will tackle some horizontal topic and put them always in the context of, uh, context of specific verticals. And only one third will be really cross verticals. What does that mean? That means that um, we will address roughly 14 major topics. On one side, more business inno and innovation topics like um, uh, business, the business innovation architecture, put that in the context of very specific verticals. Or uh, address the use, digital use case maturity, the new, uh, the typically uh, well-known new, how far are the IT users uh, in each uh, industry. Uh, so these are kind of examples. And on the other side, more uh, technology oriented or te uh, uh, reports like edge computing, cloud maturity. You, you see here again some of the top 10 predictions that Jason was talking about before. So these 14 major topics will be put into, shed into the light of, of, the, of some of the digital context we have defined already two years ago. So we will not address each of these topics in each of the verticals. Um, some of them we will cover on nine different uh, sub-verticals, some of them only one or two, if they are only relevant on that. So we have planned roughly 50, 60, 65 reports on, on these topics. As said, we will share the list with you. The other cross-vertical uh, reports, here again, we, we have structured and work on a research agenda according to our key um, expertise domain I was talking about before. Um, the security challenge, we have some, some reports, cloud and innovation, et cetera. We'll not go into uh, each of the topic again. Here you have some examples, uh, but all in all, we will um, address 30 to 35 new topics. Um, on that. As you can see also, we will um, uh, reinforce our research around SAP, uh, the SAP strategy and ecosystem, uh, as a lot is happening on this side. One of the expertise topics you do not see here, but that will infuse our vertical view is all the IT strategy and sourcing aspects. Uh, we will more intensively address in my techno, but we will, like I said, uh, infuse some of the content into our vertical or context uh, reports. So that's about the, the 100 uh, topics or new reports we will publish. But for sure, we, we should not forget the fact that all in all, CC has on top of that over 200, 2,000, sorry, more documents from um, uh, vendor rankings, vendor profiles, our classical, I would say, country reports or classical vertical reports, uh, here where, which we update every year. And for sure, the market figures, Jason was giving you uh, just a few uh, uh, view on, on how we see currently the maintenance is by verticals in EMEA. But we update these market, market figures twice a year by geography country, by verticals, by main topics. Uh, um, so this will be the next update will start in, in February. Uh, for sure, all the tracker and databases will be continuously updated as well. So that's about uh, kind of uh, deep dive on CTC. As said, we will share with you a detailed research agenda in the coming, in the coming weeks. To finish uh, this presentation, 
And I wanted to, to come back again to, to our vendor portfolio in a nutshell. And as said, we, we have redefined our vendor portfolio around to, to be clearer on, on which business uh, pain points we will address for IT vendors. At the core, there is the insight because we still believe even if the market remains very dynamic, there are some upwinds again also. And um, it's a market that is always in transformation, needless to say, and is becoming more and more complex. So we are here. That's why, why we exist for so many years. Uh, we help our clients to understand and, and, and anticipate these market trends. But much more than the market themselves and having a macroeconomic view about the trends and, and how these main changes are happening, uh, we've been acti um, active via consulting activities for, for the vendor side on strategy, positioning, go-to-market portfolio uh, for, for many years. And that's, that's therefore, we do not know do not only have expertise on the market, but know very well the software and IT services business. In that sense, we know um, how to support very closely our clients um, to help them make uh, the right decisions regarding strategy and regarding the change of their business model. Because all the transformation we see on the market today requires the software and IT services uh, companies to go beyond their traditional positioning and portfolio. Last but not least, the visibility part. Here, always respecting our objective and agnostic view, uh, we are very well positioned um, to help you um, run uh, content-based campaigns. And uh, as said before, there is a lot of content outside, but still, addressing the right business uh, pain points of your customers at the right moment with the right wording is a key aspect to enter in a in a i would say value um, value based conversation so we we structured as said our portfolio around these three pain points i will not go in through each uh, of, of the portfolio elements we will share that with you as well, with a dedicated web page that will be probably uh, launched next week. Um, on the inside part, what is important to know is that besides our, I would say, traditional analyst-led content, like on the startup side, city, or on the custom side, the, the market sizing and share, uh, market share uh, calculations, uh, we intend to go more and more um, on a kind of user-based analysis or peer uh, analysis as well. Uh, that's a change of paradigm. Um, and in that sense, we, um, based on the BI survey we do for many years, we launched this year the IoT survey. We will launch as well the smart sourcing survey next, next year. So these surveys are comprehensive uh, surveys uh, among the um, the IT decision maker on the user side, on the peer side, we get um, uh, their data and their knowledge, and, and based on that, we um, we write reports, benchmarks, and so on. So that's very important. We we uh, want to intensify um, these type of solutions, IoT survey or the, the survey solutions, and and the radar and score. We will be shorter, more crispy, and more uh, user based. As well, to finish, uh, what we strongly believe on, as I've said before, is this model of mixing the analyst on the content side with the, the cons consulting side. We are a content company with a strong consulting DNA. And as such, we are, we are working, or we already worked this year, on so content-based solutions, or IP-based solutions, we allow, uh, which allow us to provide services um, in a much shorter time frame and a more, much more um, um, reasonable budget, but still uh, addressing very specific need, taking into consideration of each individual's uh, company positioning or situation of the market. The market monitor is one of these solution and service where we use our content and our databases to do a um, half year or quarterly update for the executive and management team of the IT services vendors um, on their market and, and the client uh, transformation, the 
competitive landscape transformation. On, uh, based on the, the content and the users, we have our traditional set of consulting services, which you can categorize on two sides. One is uh, market consulting and strategy consulting. So we help on very specific uh, custom market analysis or strategic workshop to, to shape the new strategies. Um, and on the other side, uh, more and more, that's one of our key expertise since we are in the middle of the market and know uh, the whole ecosystem, uh, partner search, M&A target search, commercial due diligence, our city time of services that nowadays is very important looking at the expertise and resources shortage. Detection is again um, the typical solution, new type of solution we developed. Um, we are not one additional, I would say, um, target scouting or startup scouting service out there in the market. We anyway update our vendor database, startup database, technology companies database or future um, IT services uh, companies uh, database, but we we update them. We they are constantly alive. Based on that, we are able to um, to to do a quarterly based um, target search service to uh, to the main software and IT services companies here as well. Again, based on content and IP, we are able to act quickly on a reasonable budget and very focused approach to the. Uh, to the dedicated targets or needs um, that uh, that each of our client has, and we bring our the leaders of of, of the vendor side together. Uh, we successfully had our IoT executive dinner in Barcelona just before uh, the big IoT sum, uh, annual IoT summit. We had over 50 participants. Uh, a, a great evening organized by our IoT and, and manufacturing team. We will for sure renew that, as well as the BI leader um, uh, event or um, some further event series in small um, small teams and allowing um, to, um, to put, uh, I would say, any subjective view aside and allow uh, all the the technology leaders not only to exchange with the analysts but exchange within peers, uh, which brings a lot while thinking about the future strategy and position and the future of software and IT services. So we will continue to bring the leaders together. On the visibility side, we decided one shift, which is very important, is to um, rather focus on our strength, strengths on the project side rather than having uh, pushing some topics uh, every year uh, to to do so so-called multi-client studies, and um, uh, we have conducted very successfully, very um, thoroughly content-based campaign. Um, and usually, it's not on an ad hoc aspect, but uh, again, here we are capable of supporting a complete communication and sales campaign on two, three, four months with our agnostic and objective content, linking this content. And, and there are plenty of topics we will deal uh, with, uh, you, as you've seen in our CC research agenda. We can leverage these topics and see how it can fit one of your content uh, campaign. Sorry. So, and uh, my final word would go to a, to a new set of events. Uh, some of you know one of some of our very large events, which are always have a very local flair, like the CXP Forum in France. This will be changed into, um, into a new event series called Now, and we will extend that event series to the German-speaking countries as well, bringing the IT users together. And we are already working very hard on that new format. There are a lot of events um, uh, on the market as well, but our clients have expressed their need of having um, views of, a, of an international analyst firm as, as we are, but in uh, infusing local, uh, local touch and, 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 and proximity. So we are working on that now with our customers, actually. We are not doing that on our own. And we have work groups with them to see how we can uh, 
structure these kinds of events based on one and a half day around specific journeys uh, on key topics. The first uh, now event in the in the German speaking region will be um, early Q1 2020, and uh, for France it will be uh, in 2019 Q2 or Q3 again. So that's about our portfolio. Uh, we talked a lot about ourselves today, but that's the objective of such a, a, a AR call. Usually we listen to you, we listen to your our clients, and we take uh, uh, the time uh, every quarter um, to, to talk and give you some news that you have a better view on what's, what's happening right now. And it, there is a lot happening. So again, very proud of our new uh, technology brand and uh, our new portfolio, our new research agenda, and our focus for 2019. As said before, we will share a, a more comprehensive uh, set of, uh, of, this, um, of this PowerPoint presentation with you. And, uh, and we will um, have also, um, uh, we propose you to have this kind of webinar or face-to-face -face meeting with you in the coming month um, on, for each company on a more individual basis uh, to put more clarification on our, our brand and positioning. We already discussed such kind of, um, I'm sorry, I already discussed this kind of, of one-to-ones with some of our clients which will start uh, end of November, early December, and we will go on until um, all through Q1 um, to, to explain uh, our vision and, and how we can, um, this is valuable for, for you. So um, we, are, we have done, uh, done so far, Jason and I, um, if you have any question, you can, uh, you can uh, ask your question on the, on the chat field. Uh, we are happy to take the next five or ten minutes to ask your questions, if there is any. Uh, we already gave um, gave a lot of content, actually, so I'm not sure if, if you have some. Um, oh, I see our first question uh, regarding the IoT survey and when it will be published. Um, the, actually, the IoT survey did not give some details on that, but all in all, um, in a nutshell, uh, we, um, we are in the, the final phase of the analysis right now. We've, uh, we've been very successful for this first edition. Uh, all in all, we had 2,000 participants to this first edition who gave their opinion on almost 40 IoT platforms. Um, and uh, this opinion has been structured by six clusters and I think 24 or 25 KPIs. Uh, so very thorough analysis of the major IoT platforms. The, the respondent could um, give their opinion on only a list of 70 such providers. And at the end, 40 managed to have sufficient response or opinions to be listed in this first edition. Um, this the first edition will be published on a specific website, um, I think early February. So I hope I could answer your question. More specific, our team are here to answer to you. Um, I see the time running. So, so far, I, I, I see some other very specific questions I would not address now. Um, but um, we, as said, we are happy to answer further questions uh, on a one-to-one. -one. Thank you very much uh, for listening the last 45 minutes. And uh, really, we are all really excited to work with you. Um, in the coming weeks and, and in the new year. Thank you for listening and uh, wish you a, a very good day. Bye-bye.